In this use case, you are deploying a router to support WAN connectivity to the data center, in an enterprise topology that uses a hub and spoke model, with a single data center. At this point, you have deployed the branch site's network devices by using the Prime Infrastructure Plug-and-Play process. For more information on the plug-and-play process, refer to the Deploying Devices Job Aid for Prime Infrastructure 3.1 on our training page on Cisco.com. To begin, in Prime Infrastructure, on the Services menu, click DM VPN Monitor Home. On the DM VPN Monitor Home page, identify the hub router. Next, to begin the IWAN enablement process, on the Services menu, click IWAN Enablement. The IWAN enablement page opens and provides a wizard to step you through the router configuration deployment process. To start, click Next. On the Choose Configuration page, you select the type of router that you need to configure and the technology configurations that you need to deploy. To select the type of router that you are deploying based on the network topology, in the Select a Category drop down list, select the Router type. To assign the router's function in the WAN topology, in the Select a Device Role drop down list, select the type of router that you need to configure. The system opens the drop down lists that you use to select the configuration files for deployment to the router. Note the options that the system opens vary based on the router category that you select and the role that you assign the router. To indicate the protocol for the overlay network, in the overlay protocol drop down list, select the protocol. In this case, we can accept the default selection of EIGRP. To configure applicable technologies, in each technology related drop down list, select the features template containing the configuration that the router requires. For information on the templates that provide CLI code configurations based on Cisco validated designs, refer to the job aid. In this case, we want to enable the system to use the public key infrastructure to authenticate users logging onto VPN, so we clear the DHCP checkbox. Notice that when clearing the DHCP checkbox, the system automatically refreshes the DMVPN drop-down list to select the CVD standard template that does not configure DHCP. Now, we select the Deploy PKI checkbox. Because we want to use the standard Cisco validated design template to configure quality of service, we select the CVD template. For this router, we do not need to configure application visibility and control, a zone-based firewall, or support for sending traffic through a Cisco Cloud Web Security Server. So we select none in those drop-down lists. Finally, we do not need to deploy any additional configuration after the IWAN configuration process is complete. To select the branch router receiving the configuration files, click Next. The Select Devices page opens and the wizard updates to provide pages on which you configure each of the technologies that you selected. Now, we are ready to select the branch router to which we are deploying the configuration files. In the Devices list, in the applicable category, select the router. To indicate the method that you want to use to configure the technology parameters, click Next. On the Input Options page, you select the method that you want to use to configure the technology parameters. You can use the wizard to follow the workflow or configure parameters in a CSV formatted file. In this case, to follow the workflow, we accept the default selection of the workflow icon and then click Next. The wizard opens the first technology or feature that you need to configure. In this use case, we begin by configuring the dynamic multipoint VPN 
which supports data exchanges among branches. Because we need to configure device specific values, such as interface IP addresses, we select the individual router for configuration. Then, we enter all of the required parameter values for the DM VPN configuration. Then, click the Apply button. This action saves the parameter values that you entered. It also populates the CLI preview tab with the associated configuration code for you to review. When you have configured and applied all of the required values, click Next. In this use case, we continue by adding and applying the performance routing technology parameter values to the individual router. PFR technology allows the system to select optimal routes for application traffic automatically. Finally, we add and apply the quality of service technology parameter values to the individual router. QoS classifies network traffic for optimal routing. Keep in mind that, as you apply the parameters for each technology, you should review the associated code on the CLI Preview tab. You have an opportunity to review the CLI code for all of the technologies that the IWAN process will deploy, also. In this case, we have configured the parameters for all technologies and can continue to the CLI summary. The CLI summary page lists all of the CLI code associated with the parameter values that you configured for every technology. Important note, reviewing and validating the CLI code on the CLI summary page is a critical step that helps you ensure that the router will behave as expected when you deploy the configuration. If necessary, you can return to and change configuration parameters before you continue. When you have validated the code, click Next. Now, you prepare and schedule the deployment of the configuration code to the router. To make the configuration deployment job uniquely identifiable to system users, type the name in the Job Name field. In this case, we are deploying the code immediately, so we accept the default selection of Now. To have the system copy the Post deployment running configuration to the startup configuration. Select the copy running config to startup checkbox. Cisco recommends that you have matching running and startup configurations. When a device's startup configuration does not match its running configuration and the system reboots, it will apply the startup configuration to the device rather than the running configuration. This situation can cause the router not to run as expected after a reboot or other network issue. To have the system store a copy of the post-deployment running configuration in the configuration archive, select the Archive Config After Deploy checkbox. Cisco recommends that you store an archive copy of the configuration after deployment, which supports correcting mismatches or changing device configurations when you see unexpected behavior. In those cases, you can retrieve a configuration from the archive and redeploy it to the device. To schedule the deployment job and validate deployment, click Next. In this final step in the process, you have another opportunity to perform a high-level review to validate the job name and schedule and the router to which the system is deploying and each technology configuration that it will receive. To start the deployment job, click Deploy. You can monitor jobs and validate their completion statuses in administration on the Job Dashboard page. IWAN deployment jobs are listed under User Jobs in the Config Deploy, Deploy View category. To find the job more easily, you can search by its name. And, on the DM VPN Monitor Home page, for each hub router entry, review that the active spokes column is incremented up by one. In this case, the active spokes column for both entries has incremented up, which indicates that the Paris branch router is connected. 
The Paris branch rudder also appears in a separate entry. We successfully deployed a branch rudder by using the Iran enablement process.